Okay, this should be a short video uh, talking ab about n neck profiles, or I call it a neck profile. And um, the reason that I called you was to tell you not to do something. <laughs> um, this is the violone, uh, ba bass violone. Um, and uh, the neck is already glued. Uh, so then I, I got an email uh, from the musician, and he sent a, a photo of a, of a Roman uh, or a Roman instrument from David Techler. And uh, he's, he wants, he's interested in having this neck profile, but I've already had it glued. Uh, so so the, what you should not do, I mean, it's okay, it's no big deal, uh, but you want to finish your 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 profile, especially of the heel here, um, before you glue it, <laughs> right? And I know that, you know, I've, already, I've always known that. So you can see the current, uh, what I call the, the neck profile, you know. And the reason for this is because once it's attached, especially to a cello, is that you find yourself having to do these crazy maneuvers, you know, and... Um, like to get to it, you know, to be able to work, you know, uh, to be able to work the, the instrument, you know, you're having to uh, do some crazy acrobatics, you know, so, and I already knew this, but, um, you know, that's fine. Like, I, I can still make changes, you know, um, so it's not a big deal. And, and that's another lesson um, that I want to, you know, purvey to you is when a musician asks for cha changes or he asks for anything, the answer is just yes. You know, can you do this? Yes. I can do whatever you want. And especially when it comes to necks, because if you get the neck wrong, you know, if that doesn't feel right, um, then the, he's gonna, the, the musician is going to reject the instrument. And in the worst case scenario, if you get the neck wrong, it's, it can cause them even it to be injur injured. You know? um, so uh, neck profiles and historic necks differ greatly over time. Uh, and this is a continual instrument. So um, uh, which means um, that. You mean a bigger base? Exactly, figured bass, right. So continual instruments, um, this is in Baroque and late Renaissance and even before, uh, what they do is there's a lot more improv improvisation allowed because they, you have a sort of root or ground note and then you'll have the uh, accidentals or, uh, you know, or even numbers in, on the staff. They give the musician a kind of guide to uh, which chord intervals are, are going to work successfully. So, um, you know, there's more room. A lot of classical players will think, oh, Baroque music is very boring for, for a cellist or a bassist because they're not soloing. But it's actually very creative, and this is why every ensemble does a piece sort of differently, because continuo means that it's sort of figured bass upon a ground or upon, you know, and this is most common in opera. Well, no, it's common everywhere. In fact, uh, uh, I mean, for Baroque music, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, uh, continual instruments, you would think that they have these really thick necks. You know, if you look at iconography of uh, musical instruments, you know, or paintings of old instruments, I mean, these should be taken with kind of a, a grain of salt because they're, sometimes they can be the artist's fanciful uh, interpretation, you know. And other times you can really see, like, that really what it is what it was. But you see these, like, baseball bats, you know, for necks, you know. And, um, uh, and because, because con continual players, although they were improvising, um, they... They're, they're, they're not obligato or solo instruments, so they really, you know, it's really not a virtuoso th sort of thing to where you need to be up here and, 
you know, playing rapid, you know, passages. So uh, in iconography and in historic necks, uh, they tend to, they can tend to be thicker. So, um, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually matching the, the profile of, to this, and this happens to be uh, as well a Roman instrument or a copy of the Sima Pane. Uh, and um, so what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you, I'm gonna show you some different neck profiles. Um, oh, just, this is really cool. It just happens that like where I am now, when I looked at the, the profile this morning of the David Techler, this Roman, it's actually, it's very thin, you know, it's almost like a soloist instrument. But I had actually done almost exactly what he did, so it's really not a lot of work for me. You know, even if it was more work, I would, you just say yes. You know, because you're in service of the musician. I think a lot of uh, violin making in, in, the late, in, in the late Renaissance and, and early Baroque and onward, it wasn't this holy, holy kunst, I don't think, this revered class. They're just like shoemakers or you're, they're like tradesmen, you know. Um, so they were in the service of the musician. And I think a lot of violin makers forget that, that they're, um, they're you know, this, they're, hot, they're doing the highest art. And they can get this sort of God complex, you know. Uh, when they're crafting, to if they get good at what they do, they think, wow, you know, I'm... In, in the the twenty the, the twenty the, the the late nineteenth century and twentieth century sort of philosophy of Kunst is like that violin makers are these highly revered and this comes from the whole Stradivari uh, mythos which is absolute rubbish but that's a different uh, video altogether uh, so yeah I'm doing I'm going to do exactly what he wants because the um, the uh, this is really important. So you're making modeled modern fiddles now, and uh, uh, modern necks are going to be different, completely different. You know, um, how can I? The best way to demonstrate. Um, so I'll show you. This is my one of my. It's. Not quite ret, but it's a ready, but it's a this is how I would do my my neck profile, and you can see the difference um, this is an instrument that I made with a more kind of baroque but really. There, there is no, there was no standard then, so it's about comfort, you know. Um, and you can also see the neck attachment. It's another video that we have to do all together. If I remember correctly, I may have come in and, thin, and thinned this at the request of a customer that was here, because you can see the, this has a really big wedge. Um, This is uh, this may be a little bit better, where you have this kind of slope. Where's the where's the violin neck? I just had it. Yeah, this is really not a very good way to. Okay. All right. So here is a historical neck profile. And this is really interesting, actually, because it has the same, uh, this has a neck, neck as block attachment, which means the, this, the heel and the top block are actually the same. So, you know, when you make your ribs, you're making a top block and then you're mortising the, the, the neck into the ribs through the top, right? But as you can see on this instrument, the, you know, it's a different, we're gonna do another video on neck attachments. Right now, we're just gonna focus on profiles, neck profiles, and you're gonna to need to do this. So, right, is this, this, this is an original neck with the original uh, neck as block 
and you can see that the top plate sits on a on 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 a sort of shelf and that e adds even more strength you know so but the thing is this is not a baroque violin it's actually a, a transitional or a uh, classical instrument and i absolutely love it it's just it's so freaky the arching is so freaky but um the, I guess the point I'm making is there really was no standard, and um, I may put some photos like uh, ding, like here when I edit this video of some crazy necks where you're just like, whoa, you know. Um, so here's the thing you need to know when you're talking to musicians. You want to get their their feeling, whether they like thin or thick necks or... Uh, what is the target period that you're that you're after? You know, are they playing late Renaissance repertoire? You know, um, so normally a conti I, when, when I conceive of a continual instrument, and I really like thick necks, um, but the musician might not always want that. Now this is going to Tafel music in, in in Toronto, Canada. But the musician who's commission when he he's the, the the principal cellist, right? But when he retires or moves on or does anything else, this will stay with Tafel music. So the next continual player that comes is going to say may actually say, "Wow, this is this is a, a pretty thin heel for continual instrument," or most likely, most musicians really don't. They're used to thin modern necks. The, the, the really HIP, uh, historically informed performers who, who own a, a, a Baroque violin with an original neck, th some of them may prefer th uh, thicker necks. I prefer thicker. Um, but the point is I'm doing what, what he wants and he knows what's best. So you're in service of him. Um, I forgot, I forgot what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, so do not <laughs> finish your neck profile if you can, especially the heel, because uh, this looks pretty ugly, but the best way to, I find, and I've, I was just thinking about this again today, like, is it really faster to use the rasp or is it, is it, because the knife is usually the cleanest way, right? But you get into this coat of, this gray area where you're, I mean, you're working on end grain, you know? I don't know if you've tried to ever work in, when you're making your racks or doing carpentry, you try to cut the grain on the end. I mean, it's, it's really difficult. So I found that rasping is the easiest. Um, and this is for your tool list. I can't remember because I know you had large rasps. Uh, this is uh, a smaller one that you're, you're probably gonna need. And if you don't want to go to Bolsner, you know, you can go to uh, Gerstner, I think, in the um, in Marguer Marguerite-Strasse. Uh, it's a smaller one, and that's where I got this one. Uh, but the, the rasp really doesn't care about the grain. You know, it, it doesn't care about the direction, you know. And so you get this really smooth um, line, you know. Um, in the beginning, I'm using the gouge and the knife, uh, I'll show you some other necks. Um, this is a gamba, this is a viola, a viola de gamba, and they're always thinner, you know, because one reason is because the, this is a more virtual, viola de gamba tense is a more vir, virtuoistic uh, instrument, and the necks are much wider, so if you had this baseball bat <laughs> on a viola de gamba, I don't think any uh, musician would would want to play it. Uh, this is a this is a really large tenor tenor gamba uh, that I'm dying to get to. Uh, but we'll get. You see, it has a similar this this neck attachment system is the strongest, and we're gonna do a video on this now. But um, it actually has. If you look in shapes of the Baroque, uh, the the William Monocle uh, PDF that I sent you, 
he goes through all the neck, neck attachment systems. And this actually does the sort of um, tongue, it's like a, a tongue and groove, I'm not sure how you would say that. Uh, anyway, look at the, the, the PDF. It has a, it's really hard to fit. You have to be very, very slow because your, your angle, you're also controlling the angle on this, um, you know, Am I, am I explaining myself clearly? Do you understand? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. It has a, 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 you know, if you look at your PDF, it has a sort of like a uh, square, you know. I'll put a link in the description for the, for people in TV land. But, um, yeah, so that, that comes in. And then again, the top sits on the shelf and it's reinforced, you know. Uh, uh, for me, the, the historical method of neck attachment, the, the, the most common is nail is nailed, you know, but then you're adjusting the, um, you're adjusting the angle on, on the, on the heel, on the end grain and end grain is very hard to, um, but like I say, this is another uh, video altogether, but you see how thin that is, you know, it's, compared to the, well, they're too big to hold up. So I guess the point, this is uh, already becoming a long video and it's not a very good one because I'm not explaining um, very well, I don't think. Um, ah, the, yeah, okay, so I'm, I'll put some photos of the, some crazy necks also. And um, the one, that, the photo that I put, we're going to put up is, is, is uh, for another cello that I'm working on now. And it's just nuts. It's a crazy, crazy shape. Uh, you know, like I say, some players prefer this. So the main message for today is finish this before you glue it, right? Because <laughs> uh, you, may be, you may be eager to, to set it and... Um, you know, what I actually do is uh, temporarily glue, which is, I'm almost to that stage now to where this is the crazy fingerboard. Uh, I will temporarily glue it with just three spots, you know, and then I'll finalize my profile with the fingerboard. Um, this, the fingerboard's a little bit too thick, but again, man, this is really crazy. Like I looked at the, um, I still have some, um, some thinning to do on this side, but I looked at the profile of the tech of the David Techler uh, neck. And I looked at this and I'm like, holy crap. Like they're, they're really identical down to the, the amount. There's a little, a little bit of wedge here. So I was like, well, that's great because you know, uh, so I w we came to the same conclusions. It's just a cool thing. It kind of blew my mind. Like, uh, you know, he's not a Roman maker. He's the, uh, the, the, what happened is all of these, that's why you have all these names like uh, Goffriller. I mean, this is an ur ur uh, name, right, with the, with the, and he changed the spelling. A lot of times, the, these German makers. What happened is, I guess, after the uh, was it the thirty the Dreisig Jahrkrieg? Right? When was this? This was the uh, the Thirty Years' War. Mm -hmm. Do you know? I can't remember. Uh, this was a uh, uh, anyway. This was not good for people in Germany and in in Tyrol. So they all that. The, what happened is they all went to where the money was, which was in Venice, you know, and some of them ended up in Rome. But the all of these schools of violin making are really just Fusen, you know, this area, you know. So when people say Italian, Venetian, they're talking about Martin Kaiser. They're talking about German makers. And a lot of people don't realize this, you know. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so you want to look at as many historical necks as you can and create a kind of um, 
visual, a sort of visual memory, you know, uh, in, in your brain. Same thing with sound holes, same thing with, you know, look at catalogs, look at, just look at instruments and appreciate them. And uh, uh, the problem with neck profiles is that it's so hard to find ones that haven't been altered. The, uh, this fiddle, this antique fiddle that I love so much, it's actually a, bow, a Czech, it's a Czech violin from uh, uh, Josef uh, Czermak, 1892. So, some people say there was no transitional period of instruments. That's, that's rubbish. There was, and they, this is how they made them. You would think this was, this is, neck is blocked. They all did neck is blocked because it was really fast. Um, and I don't, the Czermak had a factory of, uh, I think he had like 10 or 12 violin makers, so, uh, but it, it's really, now this may have been thinned down, but you see this a lot, like just really organic next. Do you see how it's like thinner here, and then it gets wider, and then it gets wider here? And the, the same thing happened in, this, um, in the, the photo I was going to put up which is this crazy profile, you know. I mean, yeah, I don't know what people think, but this was probably altered. And the way you tell is that, mm, it's hard to say because, yeah. I mean, this is really thin. This is like a domingot for a woman or a person with really small hands. And this might even cause injury because the person with really fat hands with big fingers and uh, violinist, really, the, the larger your finger are, fingers are, you would think you would want to have small fingers. You know, pianist needs to have long, stretching fingers. When you have chubby fingers, you get a better tone somehow. So uh, this is why I can't play. This is why when you hear me playing, it sounds like a, a, a dog's ass scraping on concrete, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so I think I've made my point. I think I got completely off track. The lesson is um, consult with your customer, um, with your musician on their taste. And then what I'm going to do is get this to where I think it's close to the Techler because he doesn't have the dimensions on it. And then I'm going to send him the caliper me measurements because he is also a, um, uh, he's made one violin before. It was gorgeous. So he kind of knows what he's doing. Uh, and that's always great, actually, when they kind of know. Uh... All right, so I guess that's it. That was, yeah. I'm going to get back to work. Uh, All right. And then we'll do, we'll do the neck attach, attachment thing. This is a really complex, long video, maybe two videos. Uh, but the less that I, the lesson I would give you when someone, if someone says they want a Baroque violin and they want a nailed neck, my advice is, is, is to not do it. You can do that, but what I do is I, I mortise and I do a nail or a screw. So I use a viola da gamba attachment method with the shelf. And the, I promise you that's not going to shift. There's just no way. And also over time, uh, and some some luthiers say that the 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 nail rusts inside, and that makes it stronger. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's enough. We're done. <laughs> Get back to work. Uh, okay. The sun just came through all day. It's been like uh, poopy pants Galician weather, and then you just never know. It's like. Whoosh. Then you go outside and it'll start pissing on you. you know? <laughs> okay, so there's your lesson for the day. Yeah? All right, thanks. Ciao.